Let's talk about outliers. What do we do with outliers? People have lots of advice on what to do with so-called outliers. Remove the data points, impute new values, Windsorization, using robust analysis methods. We'll talk about all of these. There's a famous news segment on YouTube where the weatherman laments the death of all residents of McKinney, Texas, because it is 101,000 degrees, which is very hot, even in degrees Fahrenheit. So sometimes outliers are clearly just mistakes. They misentered the data. We could just remove McKinney from the data set, and then we don't have to think about that temperature anymore. Or we could use some contextual clues to guess whether they maybe meant to type 101 degrees, or maybe they meant to type 105 degrees, or maybe 110 degrees. Or we could use the nearby towns to impute a new value. The average of the surrounding towns is 106 degrees, so we could just guess that McKinney is 106 degrees too. Now, of course, that's not necessarily correct, but it is a good guess based on the data. Sometimes outliers are not fake. Sometimes they are real. Uh, this guy is actually very, very tall. He is an outlier. Now, how do we deal with him when analyzing data? Well, it really should depend on our goal. If we want to understand the experience of a typical person when they play basketball, well, we can probably ignore the one outlier, and we can remove him from the data set. Almost equivalent to removing him would just be to use a method that is robust or resistant to outliers, like the median, right? The median is not affected by the extreme outliers. However, if we want to understand how many people we need to build a really tall tower, then we should definitely not ignore the so-called outlier, right? He's going to be relevant to building the tower because he's gonna help us be really, really tall. Um, so we should not ignore him. The mean is a good measure, even with outliers, when what we really care about is the total, right? The mean is related to the total. It's the total divided by the sample size. So for instance, should we remove Jeff Bezos when considering the average income? Well, if we want to consider the financial experience of a typical person, then yes, we should follow the common advice to remove the outliers. Removing the outliers would solve this. Or equivalently, we could use a resistant method of analysis like the median, which is not affected by the outliers. And this is the common advice uh, we get when dealing with data that is skewed in this way, data that has outliers. However, if the government wants to understand how much money they could possibly get from a proposed income tax, removing Bezos would be counterproductive because the mean is a good measure, even with outliers, when what we really care about is the total, okay? And because his income could theoretically be taxed, the mean income really gives us the information we want in terms of taxation because what we care about is the total. Removing an outlier also has other counterproductive effects. If we remove Jeff, we lost all of his other data too, not just income. So if we want to learn about the relationship between personal characteristics like personality, education, height, and income, then removing Jeff Bezos just because he's an outlier in one respect might make us lose valuable information on the relationship between variables. One alternative to removing outliers is called Windsorization, which is a compromise where we keep outliers, but we make them a little less outliery by capping their value. So for instance, we could take the income and we could still show that it's higher, but just not quite as high. The implication of Windsorization is that after a certain point, the extra income doesn't really matter. Is that true? It always depends on the context. For taxation, this might not be reasonable, but for other analysis, this might be a good method. There are also other downsides to removing outliers. If we have enough variables, each subject is probably an outlier in some way, you are all special in your own unique way. This guy maybe is too short, so we remove him. This guy is too smart. This guy has big feet, and this guy just creeps me out. And now we've removed our entire data set. So you should really have a good reason for removing outliers before you're doing it. Removing outliers arbitrarily results in overconfident and misleading analysis. If we just remove Jeff Bezos from this data set, we would just conclude that everybody makes the same amount of money. If we remove the giant from this data set, we would say that everybody is the exact same height. If we were trying to understand the relationship between height and weight, and we removed this outlier, then we would say I can predict weight perfectly from height with this line. But that's not true because we removed the outlier, which would prove that we cannot accurately predict weight from height exactly. So as takeaways, removing outliers should not be done casually and arbitrarily. This can lead to overconfidence in results because we removed the relevant variability in the data. Removing outliers or minimizing their effects through Windsorization or robust techniques like using medians instead of means should always take into account the goals of the analysis. Are the outliers relevant to the question we want to answer? And if they are, don't just remove them. That would be silly and will give you misleading results.
Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to learn more statistics.